All right, good morning. We are looking at order of operations part two today. This is a follow-up to yesterday's lesson. And there's a couple of key ideas that we're gonna be looking at today as we study through this. The key ideas are number one, you're gonna be doing yourself a favor if you stay organized. And number two, you're gonna be doing yourself a favor if you show your work, show your steps. So one of the things that we'll be doing today is we will be looking at uh, ways to stay organized and how you can show your work to make sure that you get full marks. Now, most order of our operation questions require you to do few, uh, a few different steps. If you show each step along the way um, and then you make a little mistake, chances are uh, you won't get to the right final answer. But if all your work is correct and uh, you make one little mistake and that mistake carries through, you'll get some part marks if you show your work. So let's get started on this one. We're going to do uh, this step first because uh, division overrules uh, the addition and the other division comes later on in the question. So if we had to do, and we've done this before with fractions, if we had to show our side work off to the side, don't make that part of what you're doing because it's tough to track your thinking that one question comes out to negative three. So replace that underlined part with the number negative three. We're gonna add negative 20 and divide negative one. Now this is an interesting type of question here. This is part of why I chose this. Uh, some of you for a question like this, you're putting in uh, all sorts of weird things, but think of it this way. How many times does one go into 20? So when we see 20 divided by one, or in this case, negative 20 divided by negative one, uh, that goes in 20 times, not one time. And some of you are getting that type of question incorrect. Uh, so uh, we won't do any side work for that because that's kind of mental math. The part that is kind of tricky is a negative divided by a negative. You should be thinking, well, that's gonna be a positive. So now we have a negative added to a uh, positive number here and the positives are greater than the negatives so if you think about where that would be on a number line we'll sketch this out the zeros here negative 3 is our starting integer and if we were to go in a positive direction of 20 that would take us up to positive 17 and that happens to be our final answer. And like we said uh, yesterday, make your final answer show, maybe circle it, something like that, so it's visible in your work. Uh, and again, sorry for the blurriness of my camera. Um, I'm having trouble with my, my camera here. I'm not sure what to do about that. This one's a little bit trickier. There's brackets involved in here. So just remember, we are going to do things in the order of brackets, exponents, division or multiplication from left to right, and addition or subtraction from left to right. So these parenthetical type square brackets are the type, are, are symbols that tell us we need to do this work first, which is a subtraction. So we are gonna do the side work for that, and we're gonna use the rule that we used, and the rule was add the opposite for subtraction, add, the opposite you wouldn't need to um you wouldn't need to write that down every single time but that's just for a reminder so positive 10 added to negative 8 is positive 2. so this negative 2 is going to get multiplied eventually by positive 2 which will get added on to negative 7. So only these two integers that are underlined have been changed. Now we'll hit this one here. Negative multiplied by positive is a negative. Two times two is four, last time I checked. And then we will save our final step to be this addition question. Uh, negative four plus negative seven. We're adding on negative to negative, if we need a little symbol for that, we've got negative four, showing our work off to the side. And if we add on negative seven to that, all together, 
there are no zero pairs, no zero pairs. So it looks like our final answer should be negative 11. Let's circle that. Now here's a, an example of two um, really neatly done, well-organized questions, okay? Every step is shown. In the first question, there are one, two, three operations, and there's one, two, three lines of work. One, two, three operations, and one, two, three lines of work. We got one more example for you today before you hit your assignment. A little bit uh, groggy today, I have to admit. A little bit on the groggy side. A little extra dose of this cafe. Ah, there we go. Now we're in business. Okay, so. Uh, the rules for order of operations would tell us we will multiply first. That's really important. Do that multiplication step, and you're guaranteed to get at least one mark. Even if you don't answer it correctly, I'm going to give you a mark for choosing that operation first. So the negative 4 is going to get left behind. We're not going to deal with that yet. We're not going to deal with the subtracting positive 15 yet. We're only going to do this one operation. So 8 multiplied by 2. Last time I checked, that was 16. And a positive multiplied by a negative is going to give us negative 16. Now, part of the reason why I chose this question was because of the little bit of interference uh, in tracking the, the negatives. Now, this negative is this subtraction one here. And this negative comes from the product of a positive and a negative integer. So that's uh, a good one for us to, to practice. The other reason I chose this question was because there's lots of subtraction in it. And in our side work, we may want to track this answer. So uh, remember the rule, add the opposite. So negative four plus positive 16. Every subtraction question can be changed to an addition question with integers. And that's my, my advice to you that you do that. So negative 4 plus positive 16. If you think about what that would look like, we're going to do a review here. There's our negative 4. And then here's our positive 16. I'm not going to draw the circles, only the symbols. And we can see there's one, two, three, four zero pairs, leaving us with the answer of positive 12. So here's four by three, or if you want, four, eight, 12, positive 12. <clears throat> so this underlined part becomes positive 12, subtract positive 15. So we can uh, show our work for that one too. Remember, we're gonna keep the first integer the same. We're gonna add the opposite. So the opposite of positive 15 is negative 15. If you think about what that would look like, I don't wanna draw all the circles, so I am going to uh, do this one on a number line. So there's zero, our first integer is positive 12. Take us up to about year. And then we're going to add on 15 negatives. Well, if we added on 12 negatives, that would take us back to zero. We got to add on a few more. And you can see the difference there takes us to negative three, which is our answer. <clears throat> and we're going to circle that. Again, one, two, three lines of work because there's one, two, three operations. Uh, if I was going to mark this, I'd give you a mark for choosing the first operation correctly, a mark for each line of work. This thing would probably, this would be a, uh, a four mark question. Okay, four mark question. So you're going to get part marks for most of these on quizzes and things like that. Four marker. Okay, well, I hope you're all happy with that. There is an assignment today that's going to go along with your work. And uh, have yourselves a great day doing some more. 
math. 